Asalaamu Alaikum all. Welcome to the second of our series of Courage Sports Ladies Podcast. This is titled Ladies Mount Meet the Sports Heads. Today we have a chance to meet the ladies behind the teams. How did these ladies encourage other women to play sports competitively? What challenges did they face organizing and managing players? And how did they how did they and continue to encourage girls and women to participate? This is Coesh Sports Ladies Podcast. My name is Zainab and I'm delighted to be joined by Fatimanti Ismail from Peterborough, who ran Shia Sports Club for nine years without any experience and offered a variety of different sports from badminton, netball, football, swimming, and weekly fitness classes. Fatimanti also launched Shia Sports Minis for our younger members. Shia Sports caters for all ranges for all ages, ranging from four years to 60 plus, and gained over 150 paid members. Fatma Antifazal, who was the Leicester Sports Coordinator during the early years of MAMT tournaments. She worked alongside Kaniz Anti Moladina, and together they introduced Lady Sports to Leicester Jamaat in 1997. They also founded the Leicester City Stars, which was awarded national funding to encourage our ladies to participate in sport. Rahat Antipojani was the swimming coordinator for Leicester Ladies Sports <clears throat> from 2002 to 2016 and sport coordinator from 2005 to 2016. Rahat Anti has also been a madrasa teacher from 1995 to 2020 and was the event organizer for the MKSI Ladies Jamaat between 2016 and 2018 and is now part of the Gusal and Kafan Committee. As well as this, Rahat Anti in 2016 has also traveled to Calais, France, to help asylum seekers by helping them through their difficult circumstances in different ways, such as cooking warm meals, reading storybooks to children, and spending quality time. Mumtaz Anti Ismail is a Jamaat volunteer and part of the core team of MSC and was the co-founder of Al Najiyat Ladies Sports, now merged with Masamine Sports Club. Birmingham now merged with Masamin Sports Club Birmingham. Mumtaz Anti is also an activator for children's racket sports, table tennis and cricket, who plays badminton in table tennis also, and is also a newly adopted core member of Coach Sports family. Shami Manti Abidi, whilst living in Birmingham, was an active organizer with Coach for ladies sports events, as well as the yearly girls residential camps in the UK and Europe. Shami Manti has organized a couple of the Coage Ladies Tournaments in Birmingham and has also been active in promoting Muslim women's participate, participation in sports with the Birmingham City Council. Shami Manti has now completely retired from community work at Jamaat level and is spending time with her four grandchildren where her hobbies are hiking, badminton, reading and traveling. Sabiha Chakbar is going into her fifth year as head of sports at Stanmore Jaffrey's. She has been a trustee of SJ since December 2021, when the club transitioned to a CIO. Sabiha's day job is a finance business partner at Sky and is also a trained mental health first aider. She loves and follows all sports and has played cricket for Middlesex County and also played football and badminton regularly. Lastly, we have Mariam Datu. Mariam was the first SJ sports head from 2016 to 2018 and started the framework of a structured club so that they could offer profile sports that everyone could attend and do something for the children also. So before we begin, just a reminder that we have a date for this year's MAMT and it will be held on the 14th of May in Croydon for 16 plus when netball, badminton 50 plus, scrabble and social swimming will be taking place. Please don't forget to follow us on Instagram by searching for Coish Sports Ladies for all the late, latest updates. Thank you. So we're obviously joined with our lovely ladies. Um, and I wanted to start off by asking Fatimanti Ismail from Peterborough. Fatimanti, can you tell us what it, um, was your journey? How did it all start? And why did you join? Um, I was approached by um, Tasneem Mauji, um, who just randomly called me and <clears throat> said to me, 
um, can you do, you know, can you run um, our local uh, sports club? And um, I, I just said to her, I don't know anything about sports or I used to play badminton. Um, but she just, she was just looking for somebody and she goes, no, you do a lot of voluntary work and I'm sure that you'll be able to manage. Um, I took on uh, the commitment in 2013. Um, I started off by um, advertising and asking everyone to join a WhatsApp group. Um, organized some events, but found that participation was very low to begin with. Basically, Shia Sports was completely dry with no members. Um, and I just started off by asking friends and family, finding out what they actually wanted um and the one of the biggest events um to start off with was um having a rounders match where i found there was a lot of interest and from from this rounders tournament um later on i started badminton netball football swimming even then participation was, it was less with, with the like um, newly mums. They were having, they wanted to come, but they were having problems with their children. It was also clashing um, with the gents who were playing volleyball. Uh, so they, they used to play on a Friday and the women's um, badminton and other activities were on the same day. After, after listening to what they wanted, um, I formed a group of volunteers and we opened up a, a club for the little children from uh, ages four up to seven, which meant that the the newly mums were able to join us. So whilst the, the badminton for the ladies was going on, we also had a children's club and they had sports as well. Um, and during, during the year, we had like Seri nights where we were able to continue with sports during Ramzan, but like low profile. Um, so we'd have games in, in the mosque, Seri, stuff like Kerem, where we had like the 60 plus who joined us and everyone really enjoyed themselves. We had barbecues. Um, yeah, that was it. Lovely. So just staying with you, Fatimanti, for a second. Tell us about your first mount. Do you remember what that was like? How many participants? And uh, was it at Peterborough or were you somewhere else? I think it was Peterborough. Um, so because it was my first mount, I, I, I needed a lot of help. So the mount team helped me out. Um, with advertising and everything, it was, it, you know, I was locally trying to uh, grab all uh, the players to participate. Um, and, and yeah, we, I, I had, trying to think now. I think, I think we had a, a lot of participation from Peterborough at that time. There was a lot of youngsters. Who had joined? Okay, okay, and um, that was that. Was that market deeping? Yes, market deeping. Yeah. 
Okay. And since, I mean, you've, you were the head for quite a few years. So how many mounts have you attended? Uh, I've been the head for nine years. Uh, I remember a few, a, a couple of times we had it in Peterborough, Market Deeping. Uh, I've been to Birmingham, London. I think maybe four, five. I would have thought it was more than that, Batimanti. <laughs> I think it was about. I've seen you for quite a few years bringing yeah, your maybe, team. Maybe five, five. <laughs> <laughs> so you've taken them all over Peterborough, Birmingham, London. That's really good. And now you've got over 150. Yes. She supports members. members yeah. oh, and you started with just a few people, did you say? Yes. It was dry. It was completely dry. There was there was nobody. <laughs> um, but yeah, hard work, encouragement, and just listening to what everybody wanted and how to accommodate and you know motivate them to come. Great. So moving on to Birmingham then. So um, we've got Shami Manti and Mumtaz Anti from Birmingham. Uh, and tell us a bit about how it started with Birmingham. Was it always called Al Najiat or did you have something else before? Um, so we didn't have a name before. Um, we only had a handful of girls who... Um, I think we started with netball, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I remember um, taking, because at that time, my youngest was about seven years old. And um, I think Mumtaz's daughter was the same age. So we had the same interest in getting them to play with others. Uh, so we tried to form a team and uh, play on a Saturday morning. So um, we actually were going to pick up the girls from their homes because their mothers weren't able to drop them. <laughs> so we, I remember leaving Saturday morning, going to about three houses to pick the girls and Mumtaz did the rest. So um, we started uh, with getting them to play netball. I don't know, Mumtaz, is that how it was, yeah? Yes, um, I think we started in 1996. Yeah. And um, we were independent of the Jamaat. We were just called uh, uh, Ladies Sports Club, <laughs> unique name. Um, so that's how we started. And we just had our own finances. If we didn't, uh, the girls paid for themselves a pound each or something like that. And uh, the rest for resources, court hire. Um, bibs, netballs, we try to get donations or we just plug the holes ourselves financially, financially, yeah. And obviously that takes a lot of dedication and Shobhi Manti to go around and pick up these girls, uh, you know, I guess on a weekly basis this was, every time you'd be having a, a practice. What, what kept you dedicated? I think seeing how much the girls loved to play together and uh, also seeing how well they gelled and the friendships that came out of it. I think that was what motivated me really, you know, to see them. And it was lovely to watch them give their best um, and yeah, and help each other out. I think there was uh, such a such great, you know, vibe when they were together. Um, and I remember them getting better. I had a, a friend who was a netball coach. So uh, I somehow dragged her in and she used to give her time. Um, I, I, she never took payment in the beginning. She just wanted to help the girls and loved being there. Uh, so she helped them out. And uh, I think as, as the interest grew, um, and we had more girls and older girls join in. Um, we started paying her for the coaching because by that time we, um, but I remember like we never got any funding like Mumta said. So we were chipping in at times, you know, 
trying to uh, get get it to work because we were a smaller jamaat. So, um, um, yeah, and then to um, motivate them more, we entered them in the local league. Yeah. Um, so I remember the first time we did that and they were like obviously trashed all the time they played games. Uh, so they got a bit disheartened and we used to motivate them saying, look, it's not about that, it's about you learning. Um, and what we found was the, uh, the other players, uh, the other league teams uh, were so supportive of the girls and they found it so fantastic that the girls came every week um, to play and uh, they played with their hijabs as well. Um, so a couple of the network coaches had a problem with that in the league. Uh, so um, I then had a contact with Birmingham City Council, the network co uh, uh, you know, organizer. And they called me to a few meetings um, at uh, Birmingham Council level and uh, I emphasized the importance of our girls playing. Um, they acknowledged and appreciated that. Um, and then uh, we discussed the hijab issue. And uh, at that point, then I said to them, look, if these girls are not allowed to keep their scarves on, then we will have to come out and, you know, uh, and they said, no, 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 we do want, I think minorities to be playing. Um, so they then had a meeting with the coaches and the netball umpires, and uh, we they were allowed to keep their scarves on. So I think that was a major uh, thing for us uh, to be able to be recognized uh, at the city council level. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, Tana Mumtaz, you want to add anything to it? No, I think that's, that's good. Um... So that special dispensation of uh, having hijab on was a huge achievement for us. Uh, and the girls were comfortable as well playing with the hijabs on. Although they were thrashed at the beginning, the teams they played against were very, very supportive as well. Uh, they said to them that we started the same way. So as you play more and more, you'll obviously get better and better, which they did, which they did, yes. And I think a couple of the tournaments when uh, the umpires um, at our college uh, tournaments, uh, the umpires really did um, see the difference in them. And they said, yeah, you looks like you've played league. Although they were not like, you know, champions, <laughs> um, they did show a really good level of improvement. Well, that's really good. I mean, of course, an amazing achievement to to have, you know, that attended meetings like that with the Birmingham Council. Um, and I imagine it gave them that confidence that they needed to then attend the, the Mount tournaments and with that added little bit of style, I suppose, because they've had that experience. So, mashallah, that sounds like a massive achievement. Um, so then just Going on to the when you had a name, so do you want to just tell us about how did you get that name and where, where how how did that come about? Yeah, so uh, the girls talked about it, and obviously by this time we had uh, football teams, we had uh, netball teams. Um, so the girls talked about it, and they said, "Look, we've got to have a name," um, and um, they were kind kind of thinking about what defines us, you know, what is it about us that's important. Um, and they came up with uh, al Nadia, And I, I guess one of the girls uh, came up with it and she said, uh, it's uh, because we've struggled, it's a struggle. So, um, so we came up with that name and then everybody liked it. Uh, so we had that and then, uh, one of the girls designed the logo as well. So it came very much from the core group itself. Yeah. And Mumtaz Anti, do you want to then just follow on from Anajia to Masamine Sports Club then? How did yes. that happen? Yeah, um, I think as, as time went on, we grew sport, different sports were played and uh, 
So it was a natural progression to go into Oh, you're on mute, Mamta's auntie. Yes, as um, can you hear me now? Yeah? As as we join, as as time went on, um, we decided to join and merge with Masumin Sports Club. Um, this was just last year. And uh, because of that, we had to give up our Al Najiat brand, uh, which was okay. Um, but um, yes, it's it's uh, now becoming a sports family. So ladies, gents, children can all participate in different uh, aspects of sports, fun days, and so on. So it's more than just a. a it's more than just sports. Yes. Brilliant. And now moving on to Leicester. So Fatma Anti, do you want to just tell us how it all began? Okay, it's a very interesting question. <laughs> and um, well, it just became by incident because we were in the mosque and the girls came running. They said, oh, you know, there are some sports being held in uh, uh, Birmingham, uh, sorry, in uh, Peterborough, Go Age is doing, and we really want to play, but we don't know. So, I said, okay, we'll find out. And uh, Kaniz and myself, we took it upon us and I tried to find out what it was. I called around, somebody said, ask Nazdin Huda. So I contacted her and she was very nice. And she said, yes, this is our second year we'll be having it in uh, Peterborough. And it would be really nice if Lester can come. And she gave me the list of sports that uh, they were offering. And I said, okay. Um, I will get back to you. And we started canvassing the girls and we, in the mosque, we told everybody that uh, we could, and the girls are more interested in football because football has been Leicester's strength and has been strength all the year round up to now where they are winning the tournaments, going abroad winning it. So they started off there and uh, we said, okay, now we need some practice because the girls, they only knew that there is football they were playing in school. So how to go about it? And we didn't have any funding. We didn't have any clue to say that because I've never played football. I have played a lot of sports and have been sporty myself, but football wasn't there. So the girls, they brought their schoolmates who were coaching them. So we started playing in the park and the moms would go and stand there for all the hours that the girls were playing because we didn't have any other venue. So we would go like twice a week after school and Saturday so that they could practice it. And we were trying to prepare them for the tournament because football was the only thing we could make. And we did try to announce a sort of canvas all the people in uh, girls in Leicester, but Leicester being such a small Jamaat, it was very difficult to get the numbers. We managed like just about five or six to play the five aside and a couple for badminton. But we did not give up. We tried and we were with them. And as the tournament came nearer, we realized that they needed a kit and we didn't have any money. So what to do? So we borrowed the boys' kit and the girls wore the boys' kit. You know, the Leicester boys were play, already having a kit. So on the day of the tournament, they went with that kit and they played. And when they won all the matches, they were overjoyed. They were really happy because football was first on Saturday and Sunday was netball. Now we hadn't entered for netball. And uh, they said, but we want to play. I said, how can you play with them when we don't even have the players? No, Fatmanti, you and Kaniz and can play with us, but we want to play. Now the girls didn't even know the rules. So what to do? At night, the girls who knew some parts of the rules, they drew the chart and they said, okay, you can be here, you can be here, you will do this, you will do that. And we asked uh, Nazlin and can we play netball? She said, yeah, because in those times there were not so many teams. They were encouraging everybody. And the girls had a go at netball. Of course, they did not mean anything. They really played, but they enjoyed it. The joy was there. But for them, the highlight was winning the trophy that year. They played, they played under 14 and they won it and they were really happy. So, in fact, 
one incident that really made me happy was they told me, the girls, that that night they slept with the prof, trof, trophy because apparently maybe that was their achievement. And next day they took it to school to show it to everybody. So it was a really good journey. Then next year we knew that now they wanted to play and they kept on asking, but we want also netball. How to go about it? Because finance was an issue. We did have no funding. We tried very hard, various sources within the Jamaat, outside the Jamaat, but we didn't get so much. We tried to do barbecues, sales, and the parents were really good. The parents of the children who were playing were very good. They helped us through as well. And then a colleague in my head teacher in school where I was working, he said, why don't you apply for funding? Because we have got a lot of funding for ethnic minority. So I said, but how do we go about it? He said, you need to be a registered, uh, you have to have a name and a registered. So we came up with the Leicester Stars, Leicester City Stars for girls. And this is how it was born. And we applied for funding. And Alhamdulillah, we got a lot of money. Once we had the money, we were rolling because we bought the equipments, we could hire the coats, we could hire the coaches. In fact, one of the netball coaches went on playing till late, when kind of till late with, with the little girls. It was really good and they were enjoying it. And we were every year, the team grew as the children were growing, more people were joining. We had uh, uh, badminton, people came for badminton, netball. Once we even won the netball as a runners up, because we could never beat the Birmingham team. They were really good. So, but we made the, managed the runners up team at that time. And uh, that was it, the story. It was really good. And one incident that I must tell you was really good was our Zainab, we used to call her little Jenny. She was there. And uh, she used to play good table tennis. And after she played, I escorted her to her swimming because we had to make sure it was in Milton Keynes. The swimming pool was far away. So I had to make sure the safety that all the children are escorted safely. And she did very well there as well. Well done. <laughs> Thank you, Fatma Andy. I remember that myself. <laughs> and that's the love that now today you guys are there. And I remember Rahat Auntie also bringing her children and then getting interested in swimming and your mom doing the table tennis. So we had a lot of help from parents who were doing the sub divisions and getting on with the team. Uh, yeah, I, I, I remember those those days. It was, it was lovely. We, there was a small team, wasn't there? But Very small team because we could not, in one to play the uh, like a group sports, we always found it very difficult. So all the people who wanted to play individual sports had to play the group stops and the group sports. And that was, but they are playing so many sports, but they cannot, we cannot find people. So Leicester was given that leverage to play more sports than was allowed because of our size of our Jamaat and the people participating. And uh, Fatma Anti, what was it like with yourself and Kaniz Anti making those numbers on that netball court? How did you feel? <laughs> it was it was fun because I mean we always enjoyed sports. I really lo loved it, and so I kind of joined them when they needed it and came out when they didn't need it. But it was lovely, and then they grew from here, and it was lovely. Yeah. Brilliant. So then moving on to well, Rat Anti then. So Fatma Anti, you, you did it for quite some time. Yeah. And then it's my- I moved to London, yeah. Sorry, okay. when I moved to London, then I had to hang my boots up. <laughs> well, that's and, and she handed over to me then. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how did you feel, Rath Anti? So did you, did you accept straight away? What was it like? Uh, actually, Fatma really trained me before she handed over to me. Uh, because I was working under Fatma and Khalees, uh, because she encouraged me to take my daughter, Mariam, first for the swimming. And over there, she saw how much interested I am and how much, much my Mariam is interested in all the sports. 
So she said to me, why don't you join us with our team? And she started giving me little, little responsibilities. You take the netball this time. You go and call the coach today. So she started encouraging me doing all that stuff. And then suddenly one day she said, Rahat, I have to leave and everything to you now. Uh, and I said, okay, I think I can manage. Uh, I, was, I was already a sporty person. I love playing sports. And I, I grew up with all the girls. I had got two girls as well. And thought I have to take the responsibility. Then she trained me. And every time I was in difficult or any problems, Fatma was the first person I used to contact and ask her everything. She was very, very helpful, very helpful. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed, enjoyed my journey thoroughly. Um, yeah, I started in uh, 2005 till 2016, had many, many maps. I think about 11 maps I played with all the girls. Uh, as we were very small Jamaat, we had very few girls who were interested and I had my team sorted, <laughs> the netball team and the football team and there were swimmers and there were badminton players and there were table tennis players. Uh, um, they all are very, we were about 25 to 26 girls and they all used to help us. Zena was there all the time with me. Here's a baby <laughs> and now he's grown up, mashallah. And I've handed over all to Zena. Uh, now she's, so we have got a generation of sports coordinators in this group at the moment, uh, from Fatma to Raha to Zena now. Um, it was very um, challenging because to get all the girls, to get them to play, to get the coach. There was a very nice lady coach, Wal, which Fatma introduced me to her. She was very, very nice, very helpful. And she was very near to my house as well. She was in Loughborough. And she would encourage the girls very much. She will, we will do twice at least, Saturday and on weekday netball. Football was not a priority, but the girls for ordinary were so good. I don't have to do lots of practice with football. Badminton was natural for them as well. They used to play at school a lot. Uh, we used to practice a lot after Madrasa. I used to take them to netball courts to practice. Swimming was also very good with our girls. We used to come back with lots of medals and trophies. They were so encouraged and happy. It was used to be a happiest day for all of us. Um, and uh, the night we used to sleep in Peterborough, they used to enjoy that a lot. It was a good memory, a good memorable years we spent. Isn't it, Zainab? You can tell me that. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I was trying not to say much, but yes, no, you're, you're right, Ratanti. It's, it had been, so, it was so much fun. All of it was a lot of fun. It was I, very much fun. Well, I think I remember that because, and I, I won't say a lot, I'll only say this, but to, because that we had a small team, I just remember running around constantly because there would be an under 12 match over there. And then because we didn't have the 13 to 15 team, there was a 13 to 15 match on the other court. So I just remember running between courts constantly to just try and make up the numbers. So yeah. that you could just be on yes, the that was a big difficulty. Yeah, that, yeah. you're right. Zainab, that was a... yeah. Zainab and Mariam, they were playing with, all the age levels. <laughs> and within because our time, it was Shabana was so and Samana playing all yeah. the sports. And then yeah. finally, we were said, but you can't. We said, okay, show us who else are we going to put here? We have got no was, choice because we're such a small team. team yeah. I think they were in 21 plus football as well. And they were yeah. 16 plus football and netball and every, because I had to get the teams ready and sorted and Shabnam used to say okay okay you can do it okay yeah. you can do it <laughs> and you know like we didn't even have a sub yeah they had to play it because yeah. there were no no one else to take the place absolutely yeah, yeah. I remember running from netball to the swimming to then going somebody's calling me for the badminton, badminton and so oh yeah. there's a table tennis starting so come over there with your team so I used to grab Zenda from from uh, table netball, I said, okay, sign up. You go and play table tennis now, then we'll play the badminton now. So it was really good. Mariam and mm -hmm. Zainab, we had Sabah. There were a few girls who played really well with us. Zainab, uh, um, Zainab Ahmed, there were so many. Men there was a good. real good team. They were like my daughters. I used to call them my daughters. They're still now. Yes, they are. They them. become your children. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. sacrifice everything for them. Yeah. Everything uh, for them. Of course. Them. Everything. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was very interesting years, very interesting years. Yes, very, very nice. Hmm. Really sweet memories. 
So yes. moving on to Stanmore. So we've got Sabiha and Mariam. So Mariam, it's my understanding that you are the first um, SJ sports head. So do you want to just tell us how that started? And you've done some good work there. So just tell us a little bit about that. Thanks, Zainab. Assalamualaikum, everyone. Um, can I just say before I start, it's so heartwarming to listen to all the stories. It's you were so synonymous with so many things that you guys have all said. It's it's amazing. It's so nice to see how ladies' sports has just grown across all the Jamaats, scattering about, running, making up numbers, and that's how we've all started. So it's it's so nice to hear. Um where did I start? I want to tell you a little bit about me first in MAMT. My first MAMT was in 2003 as newly married in Milton Keynes. So the one we had in Milton Keynes was my first participant, ma'am. And Milton Keynes is a small jama, So I was one of them. And just to see how everybody had come together, the swimming, the, the football, I could see the, you know, the healthy candy competition there we had with, uh, Stanmore had with Leicester, um, as well as badminton as well. And it's, it was so nice to see something like this. Having grown up in Nairobi, I was not exposed to anything like this. So to come somewhere and see that, there is a setup, a weekend dedicated to just women and girls getting together was just, it was amazing. It was really nice. Fast forward, moving to London, um, 2015. So I was officially sports head in 2016, but there was already sports going on in Stanmore from 2015. Um, so while officially I was the first, I am the Oreo sandwich between two Sabihas, this one and Sabiha Kaku. So Sabiha Kaku used to sort of She'd organize it in the sense that it would be, it would not be, it wasn't under a, a framework. There was no structure at that time. So I would be playing football with the football girls in Rice Slip and netball would run in, in Watford and everything was all over the place. There was nobody knowing where any other sport was happening at any given time. So we weren't, it was not accessible basically. And at that point there wasn't anything for kids that was structured either. Um, so when I came in in 2015 uh, and I took over from Svia Kaku, it was more to set up a, a proper framework, a structure for ladies sports. We already had the SJ men running. They had their own sports. So there was a, a dire need for something on our side. Um, and that's when I came in. So we started off with 50 members. That's five zero. And they were predominantly playing badminton. Um, and again, more in their own little groups. And the first thing we did, I remember it was October of 2015. And the only reason I came on before 2016 was because we had a unity event that December that they wanted Stanmore to represent it. Um, so 2015, 50 members. The first thing we did was we set up a membership scheme because we knew that there was being a large amount, there would be so many children who want to participate, so many ladies who wanted to play different things. So one of the first things we did was set up a sports board, with, which I think is key to anything that's coming up. Anything in its infancy needs a group of people. It's very difficult to run things solo and on your own, especially as women, obviously, we've got so many other things going on. So I had a sports board with me and I had someone dedicated to different parts of trying to create a sports framework. Um, in January, when we started the membership scheme, we were running a pay as you go and everybody was paying two or three pounds to come in and play netball play football, play badminton. And depending on how the demand started, we set up badminton on a Monday, netball on a Tuesday, football on a Wednesday. And then Thursday, obviously, with most programs, we didn't have anything. And on Friday, we kept kids badminton because it was the end of the week. And it was a trial. Everything was new. We didn't know whether it would work or not. There was nothing like that. There was no manual. There was no user guide. We just knew that there was a lot of demand for it. There was, there was an actual call. Is there anything that the Jamaat is doing for us? Can we go and play somewhere? So even when we were attending at the MAMT events, it was not, it was as Stanmore as the Jamaat, but there was no structure underneath how the teams were formed. People would just submit, participate in that sense. So there was a, there was a call for, for sort of setting up a structure. And that's where that all came about. We grew exponentially, alhamdulillah, in the first year, 2016. We went straight up to 200 members at the end of that first year. So it was, it was nice to see. It was nice to be able to cater for the girls. A lot of our girls would not um, get the chance to play in school, either because of their hijab or because of their ability. And uh, Stan Jaffrey's had that ethos where no matter how you play, where you fit in, we want to come and attend, make friends, be a part of the setup and you know that's how we grew so that's where we that's a, that's how it started and from then on it's only just flourished we were surviving solely on the money we collected as our membership and then obviously pay as you go 
And after that, we you know started the, the club grew so much. And Sabia will tell you more about that. I'm more about setting the structure up. Blooming and thriving is, is more high department, but we had a lot of Jamaat support. We had a lot of um, local, just like one of the other uh, Jamaats had, uh, where we wanted to be inclusive, ethnic minorities attending. We had a lot of <coughs> had a lot of side support from that as well. So, and that's that's our little story. That's how we started. Grew. We became a proper formalized club. The girls wanted a kit, so we established a kit for us. We attend in our kit, and we put that ethos in where when you come to your sessions, come in your kit and, uh, you know, feel there's this club-like presence. And that's what we wanted to foster. And Alhamdulillah, come a long way for us as well. So, yeah, that in a nutshell is our story. Well, the beginning stages anyway. That, that is so interesting. Um, and <clears throat> I'm, I'm keen to, to understand, Mariam, how you obviously you bloomed um, in that first year. You said, as you said, you grew exponentially. I imagine the challenges at the beginning of starting this framework and towards the end of the year were different um, because you know you had a framework at towards the end of the year but now you had lots of members how did you how did you um, handle those challenges by you know thriving the way you did and getting to so many members what did you do well I, I think I think the key thing for us was the fact that we had the support so mostly with smaller clubs, smaller jamaat, it's the attendance, it's coming, it's getting the numbers, it's filling a venue, and then it's then bringing about healthy competition in the games, getting you know like-minded abilities in there. So for us in the beginning, it, we were lucky in the sense that in the beginning, we had a lot of participation. We had a lot of people wanting to just come. They would sign up. I remember in, in the first two weeks of us bringing badminton up, we were running badminton four days a week. And at any given week, we had 125 different women playing badminton. So be it on a Monday. Um, we also then had to do something on a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. So we we were lucky in that sense. Obviously, then the funding wasn't a problem because they were paying as you go, and we could use that money to pay the venues. In the beginning, we didn't sort of open with an opening fund or anything. We just put it out because we knew there was a demand there. So Alhamdulillah, in that, in that way, we our challenges were... I'd like to say hidden because we had the participants. We didn't have the 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 worries of you know people not filling up a venue. In fact, the problem for us was more the fact that very quickly the girls were developing and they were playing, and there was a need to then introduce coaching. And that's where most of our challenges came: finding female coaches, finding coaches who would come in what they perceived as unsociable hours because it was either in the evening or you know late in the weekends. That's where we saw a lot of our challenges. Uh, but earlier on, I would say we were lucky. I, I was lucky in that sense. I had a really great team. Um, say that was part of my team. The good thing with with our structure was we didn't just go sport focused. So in the early years, uh, Stamo ladies had four facets. We had literature and we had relief where we would do events and collect. We had sports and was one more social social that's it so because we were setting up in various different arenas and if you were not necessarily interested in sports but you were literary minded or you wanted to participate in social we had a ready membership around so we were lucky that we had something that we could offer all our girls under the entire umbrella for Stanmore Jaffrey's ladies and it's only now when Sevilla takes you through our journeys how we've become a formalized uh, club but we were lucky I mean I, I, I can't if I look back now I can't think of anything that I would say was was a blocker or was a you know stop gate there for us we were we were lucky alhamdulillah i think that only came with the numbers with the benefit of being part of a bigger jamaat so which is why it's it's quite heartwarming when you hear what some of the other smaller jamaats have gone through you know things like collecting the girls that's amazing i mean that's i can imagine how difficult that would be to just go around to pick so that you can fill a venue and it's alhamdulillah it makes us appreciate that we're lucky we had the numbers but hats off to you that's definitely well done <laughs> on that side So then moving on to uh, Sabiha, so how is it now? So I <laughs> took over from Mariam, what, five years ago? Yeah, yeah about five years ago. Um, and since then, it's grown even more. And we've kind of, I think we've doubled the number of sports. So at the time I took over, we were offering five sports. Um, we now offer 12 sports. Um, so pretty much everything that you can think of um, is under Stan Mujafri's. Uh, and we've grown to ladies-wise about 550 people 
Um, so we've got now kind of how, how Mariam said we had one thing every day. We've probably now got at least two, if not three activities running parallel every single day. Um, and we're blessed with, with as Mariam said, the numbers um, that we have. Um, and as it grew, I realized that, you know, it's it's difficult um, to run this without a um, kind of admin structure and IT structure um, and a formal structure. So that's where I came in um, alongside the gents and we worked together to to formalize Stan Mujafri's as an actual um, charity. Uh, we set it up um, for the purposes of making sure that we could ensure over a thousand people to play 12 to 15 sports a week. Um, and we had the system so that we weren't running ourselves into the ground trying to, you know, manage a huge number of sports. And I'm I'm blessed as well. I've got a, a wonderful team behind me, um, both ladies and gents. Um, and we work we work really close together to to try and sort of cater <laughs> to so many different abilities, so many different um, you know, wants of different kinds of sports. Um and so we've got kind of the challenge we've got now is the um Comp competitiveness versus the social aspect um, and how to kind of balance that across mm. the club. Okay, and I'm curious, um, Sabiha, you, you mentioned you've got 12 sports running. That's, that's a lot of sports. What are some of the non-MAMP sports that you do? So um, one of the ones that I think really should be in Mount is tennis. Yeah. Um, so I my first Mount was 2016, I believe, when it was here in London. Um, and since then we've had a lot of ladies saying, Oh, can we include tennis? And I think that was one of the reasons why Marhaba came about. Yeah. Um, and you you founded Marhaba. Yeah, because it was in 2018 we ran our first Marhaba. So again, I think the men had the uh, sorry, so we had to take over from there, but the men had a, a similar call where the boys wanted to participate in sports that were not necessarily offered in uh, in Mount, tennis being one of them. And because they found a, a, a amazing warm weekend that August, uh, that May, we got we, we got the opportunity to run something for the ladies. So it was only because we had a lot of ladies saying, you know, is there any opportunity for tennis to come up? And we thought we'd run something locally and it's just, and now it's become our flagship event. So one that we, we we host every year and we open to everyone and we hope that they can participate in sports that we don't necessarily automatically have access to um, on, on a national sort of uh, arena. But yeah, 2018 was the first Marhaba. Sabi has gone on to do two more. Yeah, two more. Um, so yeah, tennis was one of the ones we now have running. Um, we have volleyball. Uh, volleyball is really um, coming up. Uh, so that's based off of the fact that the Stanwood Jaffrey's men's volleyball team have attended multiple international tournaments and so now the ladies are are working towards that um, <laughs> inshallah uh, we've introduced throw ball uh, we've introduced golf um cricket uh and cycling so yeah they're just some of our kind of mm -hmm. non-man sports and and we've noticed the shift has come about between some of the more traditional sports and some of these newer sports so inshallah and um, hopefully these are available in maps um soon um, so Another one we do is our fitness. Uh, right. I can tell everyone we, we have a wide fitness portfolio. So to cater for the women who don't necessarily want to do something sports structured, um, we offer we so, offer uh, Pilates, mm. yoga, boxer size. Uh, we did offer soccer size at one point. Um, yeah. We kind of we try and bring something new and fresh sort of every every few months just to keep the membership engaged because keeping sort of over 500 ladies engaged it's, um, is, isn't, is not easy so we try and bring um, new things up all the time. Great and I know in the interest of time I'll just ask a question to whoever whoever wants to answer but um, what advice would you give to the upcoming sports coordinators of any Jamaat? Brilliant question. Go for it to be. I'll, I'll round up. Oh, that's a good. Um, <laughs> build a good team, and ask ask other Jamaats who are established for help. We are more than happy to come and assist in in setting up the structure. Um, in trying to make things as automated as possible, and trying to put that infrastructure in place that will mean that it's easier to run, is what I would say. Mm. Um. Well, I would say don't give up. Sometimes you get the challenges because you're only two people in a team because you're maybe new. And, you know, when you go through all the hardship to then have a little 12 year old come and say, 
Thank you for organizing that, Auntie. I got to play for the first time. I learned how to hold a netball, or not netball, or you know, hold a badminton racket. That's what's worth it. So whether your Jamaat is small or whether your Jamaat is large, your challenges will be different. But I think it's our duty as women who not only love sport, but can open those doors for our youngsters, our youth of tomorrow. Please persevere. Reach out for help. College is there as well. I'm sure the other Jamaat bodies, they'll be more than willing to help. Reach out. We we probably have an answer for every challenge you're facing, and we can you can we can advise you to do it better than we did. So, but don't stop. You're doing a great job. Excellent advice. Anybody else want to give us a, a few pearls of wisdom? I would only say don't give up. Just work hard. Carry on. Especially you, Zainab. That's only when I can give it to you. Um, and uh, try as you are doing a really good job. I want to say thank you for all the sports activities that you organize over here in Leicester. Doing a really good job and just keep it up. Keep it, don't give up. Um, have lots of patience. You have lots and lots of patience. Jugs and jugs of patience. <laughs> That's all I can say. That's it. <laughs> and I've learned all this from Fatima Fazl. And I say thank you because when I came, she gave me everything. So I don't have to find the name of the, the, the group. Bibs were there, coaches were there, money was handed over to me, lumps of money handed over to me. So I really wanted to say a big thank you to you as well. Yeah, you thank guided you me for really taking well. them through so well. Yeah, I'm pleased to see because as I said, it's always in my heart and I'm so glad that they're still doing so well. They are doing really well, yeah. Okay, really well. Good. And I would just say one thing that I kind of really enjoyed when I was there was, uh, you know, we coordinators used to have a meeting at night and it was really good. It was not only social, then we would bounce ideas from each other and carry it on as we went. I don't know how, what happens now because the sports are quite wide, but that really helped me as well to bond with people, to know and also to learn. So that was a good thing for me. We, need, we just make sure we all have the unity, whether you are from Leicester or Birmingham or Peterborough or Stanmore. The unity is very, very important. Sports is afterwards, but being, uni being united and being Muslim Shia is more important than being a Leicester Jamaat or a Birmingham Jamaat or Peterborough Jamaat. You have to be, have a unity among yourself. 100%. Agree. 100%. Lovely. I mean... Obviously, having you all in our virtual room has been amazing to listen to you all, listen to your stories. So a massive thank you to all of you for taking the time out to get together this afternoon. And thank you to our viewers uh, for listening to us. And just please remember that we will be doing a series of pod podcasts with exciting topics. And if you haven't already, just a reminder to follow us on Instagram. And please feel free to direct message us any suggestions on topics you are interested in or email us at coageladiesports at gmail.com. Inshallah, hope to see you all soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Zainab. Thank you, Zainab. Can I just apologize to